Hi everyone, welcome to the analysis of Gran Torino. This is not going to be the typical analysis you'll be doing in school, where we talk about conventions, but I'll be exploring some of the main themes and characters and will hopefully help you guys understand the film at a deeper level. And once we understand the film and its messages, it's easy to find the conventions to support that. Just keep in mind I'm going to be assuming that most of you have watched the movie and have maybe done some reading on the movie and Clint Eastwood. Also keep in mind that the movie is rated M, so just a warning that there will be swearing on the video clips we'll be taking a look at. This is the timeline of the videos that will be coming up for section 2. For those of you who are interested, just pause the video right here. Alright, let's start with the main themes. Now even though there are a lot of articles written online about how Gran Torino is saying that masculinity involves being violent, sexist, racist or homophobic, these are not key themes because they do not drive the story. The themes that do drive the story are of fulfillment, of Walt as he finds purpose and happiness in his life, then there's the transformation of Tao and Father Janovich, and then finally there's masculinity and masculine values, and it's these masculine values which drive the transformation of Tao and Father Janovich. Now before I go further, I just wanted to say that the point of this analysis is to not take the easy way out when talking about masculinity and masculine values, because it's so easy to just say that this movie is encouraging men to be racist, aggressive, homophobic, and violent by taking everything out of context, which is very easy to do. God, I've been more in common with these goose than I do my own spoiled rotten family. We used to stack fucks like you five feet high in Korea, use you for sandbags. Shut up, goop. <laughs> You want to know what it's like to kill a man? Yeah, of course you'll take it. Because you have no teeth, you have no balls, kid. Relax, separated. I'm not going to shoot you. How many swamp rats can you get in one room? You know, I knew you were a dipshit the first time I ever saw you. And you know why? Because you're a big, fat pussy. Yeah, some scared little gook just like you. The hell he spooks up to? Good day, puss cake. Get off my lawn. I got nothing to say to you, shrimp dick midget like you. That's me. So as you can see, it's quite easy to paint the picture that you want by taking things out of context, and you need to be aware of this. But if you watch the film carefully, you'll find that masculinity, yes, it can manifest itself as those things, but it's more about a set of values that I'll discuss later on. And I think that to argue that the film is about teaching men to be racist, sexist, and violent is to be missing the point and beauty of the story. Now let's start with Walt, because Gran Torino is ultimately about his fulfillment. Now what do I mean by this? Well at the start of the film, he's antisocial, lonely, and his wife, who he describes to be the best woman on the planet, just died. He isn't close to his sons, and he's haunted by memories from the Korean War as a war veteran. In addition, the spiritual characters in the movie state this explicitly. Well, I, I survived the war. Got married at a family. Sounds like you know a lot more about death than you do living. He says that people do not respect you. They don't even want to look at you. It says the way you live, your food has no flavor. You're worried about your life. He says you have no happiness in your life. It's like you're not at peace. Keep in mind that Korku and Father Janovich, as spiritual or religious characters, typically symbolize wisdom and truth. And people and cultures all around the world have been conditioned to trust what these kinds of characters have to say. Famous characters that fill this archetype in other films include Gandalf and Saruman from Lord of the Rings, Yoda from Star Wars, and Rafiki from The Lion King. But as I said, the film is about Walt's transformation. So in terms of flavor in his life, which means happiness and purpose by the way, happiness comes in the form of Tao and Su who become like the children he's never had, and who are pretty much the opposite of his sons and grandchildren, and this relationship is also accepted by Tao and Su because, as Su says, she wishes that their father was more like him. I wish our father would have been more like you. In particular with Tao, there's a lot of father-son moments in the film between them as well, like helping him get a job, teaching him how to be a man, and giving him dating advice. In terms of purpose, 
He achieves this by sacrificing his life to ensure that Tao and Su and the rest of the neighborhood are safe at the climax of the movie. Now this scene is important because it ties off a lot of loose ends and has a lot of meaning as well. Firstly, you can draw the parallel between Walt and Jesus. So if you didn't know, in Christianity, Jesus is the son of God and dies for everyone's sins to save them from hell, whereas Walt dies for the safety of his community, so they're both dying to save other people. And in Christianity, this is defined as the ultimate sacrifice, as explained by this quote from the Bible. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. And obviously love is the highest good in Christianity, so the idea is that what Walt did is of the highest good. And we can make this connection because Walt dies in the shape of a cross like Jesus, which is extremely obvious and forced, so it's not a coincidence. It's a good idea to keep in mind the heavy Christian influence and imagery used in the film, and maybe you can spot other things as well. I also remember when he explains to Tao about what happened in Korea. He was the only one to come back from taking a machine gun nest, and how he was awarded the Silver Star because of it. So in his previous life, when he was still a soldier, his comrades died for him, and obviously he feels bad about it because he felt like others died for him and he hasn't really made the most of his life yet. But in the end, obviously he makes the ultimate sacrifice, again in this I mean in a Christian context, which redeems him from his guilt because he finally lives his life to protect others, and this is shown by the focus on his first cavalry lighter, and we'll take a look at that later as well. And we also have the quote from the movie, which starts off from Father Janovich where he says, Death is often a bittersweet occasion to us Catholics. Bitter in the pain, sweet in the salvation. Finally, at the end of the movie, the audience can now understand what this means. It's bitter in the sense that the audience is sad to see Walt go, but is happy that Tao and Su will no longer have to fear for their safety. It's also sweet in the sense that Walt has finally fulfilled his purpose and given his life meaning. So let's take a look at the final scene again. I want you to pay extra attention to the movement of the camera, the lighter in focus, and the music. So notice in the scene how the camera focuses on the lighter. This is about Walt finally finding purpose in his life and giving his life to save others, the way other soldiers in his company did for him in the war. Then we have the camera moving upwards, which for me represents his solar spirit going to heaven, or that we are some omnipotent being, like God, watching over him and being satisfied with what he's done. Then the music starts playing, which is called Gran Torino by Jamie Callum, and it creates a very emotional atmosphere. However, the song plays a more important role. I think its primary role is to create this cathartic effect where we feel all this built up tension and emotion released from our body, and in a way I think it's supposed to get us to feel the same relief that Walt is feeling. As a man that is on the last legs of his life, feeling inadequate and unfulfilled, he finally achieves happiness and purpose by doing something that's considered the ultimate sacrifice. Walt Kowalski once said to me that I didn't know anything about life or death because I was an over-educated 27-year-old virgin who held the hands of superstitious old women and promised them eternity. Walt definitely had no problem calling it like he saw it. But he was right. I knew really nothing about life or death until I got to know Walt. And boy, did I learn. And that's it for part one. Hope you guys found it interesting and hopefully learned something. I'll see you guys in part two.